All right, so we've been talking about man's possible evolution. Is it possible for us to evolve, to become higher versions of ourselves? Gurdjieff says yes. I'm taking a lot of this from Ospinsky's stuff, who was a student of Gurdjieff, and trying to break this stuff down. This is the second video in the series. Last time we talked a little bit about the difference between personality and essence, and we're going to go into that and talk about how to discover your essence and what to focus on and what tools to use in order to get closer to understanding our true nature, who we really are, that perfection that which we are underneath. Now, Gurdjieff again starts with a problem. He says, look, you got some issues. You don't remember who you are. You don't even know who you are. You don't feel yourself and you're not conscious of yourself. We're not self-aware. And I can absolutely understand this concept because I lived most of my life that way, completely unaware of who I was, that I was having thoughts, what thoughts, why I was having certain thoughts, etc. right? Uh, most of my life, I think that's kind of where my head was at. And then one day, <laughs> I started asking questions and shit got weird. But what I started to understand was that there was more to me, the human machine, as he would call it, right? Man is a machine then I am obs observing or able to observe. So we want to understand who we are at a, at a fundamental level, at our essence level. The personality is mostly created by patterns, society, culture, outside influence, ego, those types of things. So it's not who we really are. Our personality, it's important to develop and it is a part of who we are and, and it is necessary but essence needs to rule the day. If we can't understand essence, and I'll give you a quick example. If we can't understand our essence, we're never going to really embody our full potential. It's just not going to happen. So uh, essence, uh, and a, a great example of this was during the pandemic, a lot of people were doing these Zoom comedy shows. They were terrible. Uh, there was no feeling. There was no vibe. Now, I'm not talking about live streaming an actual show that's happening. You can kind of catch a little bit of the essence there, right? So if we just look at recording in general, right? if I'm talking about somebody standing in front of their computer and telling jokes, and it could have been a great set, like the best jokes ever, but without having all those people in there and that energy, which is what we're going to really start to focus on here pretty soon, without that, there is no essence to the thing. It's not, it doesn't have the same uh, effectiveness. It's, it's, it's not embodying itself. There's no depth. There's no soul. There's nothing to it. It's just personality. It's just a program. And that's kind of where we are. And that's kind of where we start. So the first thing that he says is that you, we have seven centers of awareness, seven centers of awareness. And I wrote this down over here. Hopefully this will translate over. Let's see if I can pull this off so that I didn't have to write it down again. Our seven centers, thinking, is the first center. Feeling is the second. Third are our unconscious processes like breathing, our heartbeat, etc. Nervous system stuff. And then fourth is movement, so body consciousness. Now there's seven. I'm starting with four because these are the ones that he says to start off with. Thinking and feeling. Hey, do you know there's some people that don't know the difference between thinking and feeling? And that's true. And I think it's important for us to ask ourselves the question, do I know <laughs> the, the difference between feeling and thinking? Because a lot of this is going to come back to self-inquiry. Okay. If there was a theme, if there was one technique, you can take it to the bank that it's going to be self-inquiry. That's asking ourselves questions about our experience so that we can better understand it and observe it. The quote is, none but ourselves can observe our own faculties. None but ourselves can observe our own faculties. No one else can know you. Only you can do it. Nobody else can do it. Now, these are the places to start. That's why I have these four up here. Because these are the ones where we can really kind of start to zone in and actually do some work. And we can't really do any work if we're asleep or, you know, unconscious. I don't mean asleep. I mean you can do some serious work in the dream state. But... Uh, if we're not aware, then we can't really do any work. It's, it's kind of, what, what's the point? So we want to understand that we have these different places that we can put our attention to. 
thinking, we can focus on that. We can separate that from how we feel in our body, our emotions. We can observe our unconscious processes, and this is a lot of what meditation they talk about. That is breathing, heartbeat, things like that. And then finally, movement. Now, Gurdjieff, fun fact. Gurdjieff had this group of people who would go and dance, and I haven't seen it, but I'm sure it's pretty wild. It's like they had like Stomp the Yard, but like the Russian edition with big mustaches. I don't know. It sounds like a circus. I'm not really sure. Maybe I can dig up some footage. I need to check it out and see if I can find it. But, uh, but that's what they did. They went up and they did their gypsy dance or whatever, and, uh, and they moved around, and they were doing their body. I went to the trampoline gym one uh, time, maybe a few years ago, and that was kind of a big thing that they were working on was body consciousness, body consciousness. One thing uh, in Toastmasters, which is like a speaking group, they'll make you very conscious of yourself. And now, so here, here's where we kind of need to give ourselves a little bit of room probably as far as being too self-conscious. That can be a problem where you become overly critical. But we do want to feel all of these different centers. We want to understand what's going on in each of them, be able to identify them. This gives us a place to start. And then there are three more, and those are sex, the higher emotional center, and the higher mental center. So those are the, the seven there that he identifies. And we're going to come back to this because there's another model that's going to parallel this, of course, because it's reality. Uh, but yeah, once again, seven. And these are the different centers to begin with. And then you get into these other ones, you know, kind of at a later time. Then these guys are going to talk about, they're going to talk about the, they're going to talk about the two illusions. They're going to talk about lying specifically and what lying is. The first illusion is I have it all already. I don't need any help. That's what Gurdjieff says. The second illusion is, uh, yeah, I have it all. I have, wait. The first illusion is I have it all already. The second illusion is I can do it all by myself. Those are the two illusions. I, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> when we lie to ourselves, that's really what lying is. That's the point. The point is a lot of us, we think we don't need help. We think we don't need some feedback basically in order because everyone has their own medicine and that's one of the things that he makes as a point now this might have been a marketing point for him i see a lot of people that do a lot of good work by themselves but i would point to statistical data that shows that the best way to learn anything is generally speaking on a one-on-one -on -one mastership apprentice type of level that's my favorite way to learn and groups are pretty good so he he was a big fan of the school he was a big fan of having people help other people in order to basically awaken their nuance, awaken what they're supposed to be focusing on. And I find this is true in a lot of higher sort of artistic kind of circles as well, that there's a lot of people behind the scenes. There's a lot of people who are giving feedback and, and, and people who want to get better are not afraid to ask for help. I'll just say that. That's what schools are for. Okay. So one of the things that he says is when we lie, we create what we call like an artificial intelligence. We're not talking about lying like I stole a cookie from the cookie jar, you look good today, have you lost weight? We're not talking about any of that stuff. That stuff is good to go as far as Gurdjieff's concerned. We're talking about self-deception, lying to ourselves. That is the sin, right? Like that is the thing that we can't really look back from. And pretending to know things we don't already know. Now, this may have just been a thing when I was growing up because when I was young, we didn't have the internet. So people would pretend to know things and you would be kind of goaded into pretending to know things. I think it's a little bit lessened now that we do have the internet um, and because you can just be like, well, I'll just look it up or whatever. So you don't have that sort of ego stake. But that is a huge problem. A lot of people think that they know more than they do. Most people think that they know more than they do. And what he's saying is, you don't. You don't remember yourself, you don't even feel yourself, and you're not conscious of yourself. So until you can do those, you can't really just do as you like. But if you can master these things, you can do as you like. That's his quote. All right, so getting back to personality and essence, those seven centers are in the essence category. All seven of those centers can only be observed from the essence aspect. The personality, speaking of the internet, 
is this programmed part of us, the ego, the ideas, the, the, the things we think we are, the projections. And the internet is basically like a personality machine. There's no essence really coming through the internet. <clears throat> Back to the Zoom comedy show, which is just god awful. You don't want to see that. It's all personality. It's all just someone indulging in who they are. And energy comes from the source of essence, which where, is where those seven centers are. So, you know, back again to being aware of those centers, understanding them emotionally, and then focusing on each one of them, specifically emotionally, because one of the biggest sort of drains are, in this work, negative emotions. Now, I just want to say real quick that this is a lot, first of all. This is kind of a lot for one video. It is what it is. <clears throat> I'm going to try to get this out there, what I had in the outline. But this is going to sound like repression, okay? This is going to sound like repression. It's not, okay? I'm not saying don't feel your emotions. I'm not saying, you know, ignore the way you feel. But what I am saying is to understand that a lot of the negative emotions that we feel come from this part of the spectrum. Personality, right? Our culture encourages us to indulge in certain things. And we know when we indulge in that, that carnal thing, right? And it's kind of like this release. It's kind of like this release because we're embodying this essence, we're embodying this essence, and we build energy by awareness of essence. So the more energy that we build, the more tense we get in our body. That's a good thing though. It's a good thing to build energy. Trust me, it's not easy. I'm not saying it's easy, but that's the point. The point is to build energy and awareness in the essence category. The essence should, should be predominant. The personality is necessary, sure, absolutely. We can't go into the world without a personality. We need to understand how to interact with people. So that's important too, but it should never over whelm the essence. Now, here's what you see a lot. You'll see somebody who has an underdevelopment of essence, and very often it'll be someone of high intellect, but then they act childish, right? Like they won't play anymore this game, right? I'm not playing anymore because you don't play my... It's like, dude, we did that when we were real young, right? We've mostly developed since there. Now, that's a personality device, right? And you might see somebody act outrageous like that, and they might be a perfect... You're like, you're a 45-year-old man. Like, what are you doing? But yeah, they're, they're just underdeveloped in their essence and that can happen. So think about indulging, think about building energy, become aware, self-inquiry, ask yourself, you know, how, how, how do I build energy in my body, right? Like I'm not here to tell you what to do. I know there are certain things that are very obvious to me that I do those things, my energy goes down. I leak energy. He goes as far as to say that even talking is leaking energy. And I can see that as a habit for some people. I'm not saying talking is bad, obviously, but for some people, they just walk around the house and they just walk, talk. And it's just leaking energy. They just can't keep their energy inside of them. They can't hold it. Now, the more energy that we can hold and focus, the more, basically, we can use that energy to our benefit, right? Like, we want to build energy. Building energy is a good thing. And the more we can observe ourselves, the more we can understand how to apply that energy through self-inquiry. Okay, so back to self-inquiry. That's the real name of the game here. And there's a lot of exercises that you can do. There's a lot of exercises that you can make up about trying to focus in on these seven centers, starting with the really the four. The four are the most important. Starting with those four and then asking yourself about personality and essence, as well as what, indulge, what do you indulge in? Is it gossip? Is it chips and salsa, like whatever it is, ask yourself. And it's okay to admit of those indulgences and those negative emotions uh, that are kind of like, that are there. It's not wrong to have that. It's just the, the point is to understand it. And instead of, you know, succumbing to the temptation of just being really carnal and, you know, giving away a bunch of your energy, you can, you do have the option to keep that. And there's a lot of different ways to do that. You, but back to self-inquiry, right? Like, how do you do that? How can you hold that energy? Because the more you can use it to focus, the more effective you can be. Uh, so, and then the more self-aware 
the more, I mean, it's just a, it's a positive loop. Okay, this has been too long. I didn't mean to go this long, but it's kind of hard not to. All right, so next time we're gonna talk about external versus internal considering. This model is fantastic. Ask yourself about your essence. Focus on your energy centers. Differentiate them. Play around with that stuff. Self-inquiry, 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 and we will see you next time. Peace.